Hi, I'm Justin with J-Max Plumbing, and uh, we're here today at, uh, at my house, actually, where I have a test tank that we will simulate sometimes some plumbing scenarios when we're trying to figure out a better way to do things, or maybe something we're doing isn't working how we want, and we want to test it and see if there's a different way or something that we can do to make it do what we want. So what we have here is uh, basically a 4x4 cube. It's plumbed right now as if it was a spa. It's got therapies, air, it's got a couple variations on uh, therapies and air. It's got a, a common air line as well as it's got some individual air lines. We have the ability to run six to eight therapies depending on what we're testing. Um, we got a couple different suctions in the bottom. So basically um, we can simulate anything that's happening in the field here and work on it um, before we put something out in the field that doesn't work or we might not know about. Okay, first thing we're gonna show you is we're gonna give you a visual on what line velocity looks like. Right now we got this set up at about three feet per second in this four inch line. So we're gonna sink this ping pong ball and we're gonna show you pass through the suction line. Okay, so what you just saw was that ping pong ball passing through the suction. Each one of these increments is 12 inches, it's a foot. So it was three feet per second is what you saw pass through here. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys something else we talked about on the podcast, we talked about pressure drop. What we have here, this loop, this is a loop that I've built to simulate uh, any piece of equipment that we want to pretend is connected to this plumbing system. And the way we do that is, uh, we have flow going through the loop. This valve will add restriction. We'll measure that restriction by the pressure drop from the inlet side to the outlet side. For example, at 100 gallons a minute, which is what we're running right now, um, this is gonna be a bit excessive for a heater, but a heater would be at about uh, an eight PSI drop. So we're gonna adjust to eight PSI between these two gauges. So we're about 15, we're about 18 to nine, a little bit more. Let's correct that down a little bit. So now we are simulating how much restriction a heater would put on this system. You can also simulate any, any other plumbing fixture or product just with this resistance loop. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how you use some of those numbers that we talked about in the podcast as well. We talked about 1.13 and 2.31. With the system running, these gauges are showing what our vacuum is at our pump and what our pressure side uh, pressure is on this pump. These are taken directly before and after the pump. So with these numbers, we can figure out what is the total dynamic head of the system. If we take this vacuum reading times 1.13 and the pressure reading times 2.31, and then we add in any vertical rise in the water from where we're picking it up to where we're delivering it, which in this case is zero, we will get our total dynamic head, which in this case is 38. Okay, so now we're gonna add some restriction or head to the system and we're gonna see how that changes our total dynamic head. So there we go, we've bumped up, we've added some restriction on the pressure side. Now if you take a look at the gauges, you can see our vacuum drop down, it's because we've slowed down the water flow, so our velocity uh, drop. Pressure side jumped up to 20, so we went from, so now if you were to do the math on this, our total dynamic head is 46, roughly. So we jumped from 38 to 46, just adding a little bit of restriction on the return side. Okay, so now we're gonna show you some stuff at the tank here. I'm, I'm gonna turn on our therapies. So now we got our therapies running. We got water feeding into our loop. This is our pressure side loop on, on the jets. Um, right now you can see we're running at about 70 GPM, which is way too low for uh, jets, but um, you can kind of get a demonstration on, on what that looks like see all the airlines in this pure PVC there's no water in them anymore before we started these were full and you can see if I turn this off it's gonna fill back up we add the pressure back it's gonna draw a vacuum it's gonna draw that airline completely dry this is our Hartford loop that we had talked about this always has to rise higher than the water level as to not have the airline fill up with water 
when I shut this off, you're gonna see the water rise in this pipe and you will understand why the Hartford loop must be higher. So you can see now as things are equalizing, the level in this pipe is gonna equal the level in the, in the pool, or in this case, the tank. And the bottom of this loop has to always be higher than, than that water can rise or else the water will flow down in the loop and fill this airline. Right there is about, it's about where it is. So you can see how important it is to have it higher. All right, right here I'm gonna show you from a side angle with clear PVC, how the therapy works and how a Venturi T works. So we're gonna turn this on. And what you're seeing now is it, draw, it drew all the air in because it created a vacuum here with pressure coming through the Venturi T, squeezed down through an orifice and out. And what you see here is air and water mixing that results in the plume. Right now it's, it's underserved in GPM, but. Okay, something else I wanna show you. We talked about on the podcast, uh, therapies on a filter system and what we can get max. So I wanna show you uh, with a very short run, we have everything in our favor. We got water higher than the pump, which is helping in restriction. Uh, I'm gonna show you that we can't get enough water to serve more than six jets. It's gonna be marginal even at six. Therapies need 20 gallons a minute. We got six running, so we need 120 gallons a minute. I wanna show you right now, we're running at 60 gallons a minute, okay? I'm gonna flip this suction to four inch. Okay, so now we have four inch suction, which I guarantee you most people aren't running on their spas. We got four inch suction. I'm gonna turn this pump up all the way. 3450. It's 3450. We're gonna check our pressure drop. Looks good, that's what a heater would give you. Okay, we got it plumbed and a two and a half inch return to the jets. And our net is 96 to 98 GPM. This is full pump, four inch suction, five foot run. Our max that we're getting out of this system on a clean filter is 98. Okay, one other thing we're gonna show you today. We talked about in the podcast, uh, spa therapies that aren't performing as they should and how a customer's perception of that may be that they are, but we're gonna show you the difference. If you look on the top of this, a customer might think this spa is working great. They see air, they see the therapy action. We're gonna show you from the side what's really going on. You can see here coming out of this jet, it's barely giving uh, a therapy action. It is emitting air and water, but there would be no therapy action uh, really from this. I'm gonna show you now when we, when we feed it the correct, how much that will change. Now you can see you actually have forward movement of water to where it would be against your back. You would be getting therapy action. The air is completely mixed in and not rising. It's completely mixed in with the water stream. This is how a jet should look. 